Hi everyone. In this short video, I just want to explain why the demand curve for loanable funds will shift either to the right or to the left. And that's the terminology I'm going to use. Try to avoid using up or down because that can become confusing when you get to supply curve shifts. So here's the thought experiment we're going to need to conduct. I mean, there's a whole bunch, technically an infinite number of things that will cause um, you know, the demand or the quantity demand of loanable funds to shift. In this case, we've pretended that the real interest rate is constant and that we're starting off with a fixed demand curve. So we're starting off with the assumption that everything that you could possibly imagine that influences how much firms want to borrow is fixed and the real interest rate happens to be R. Okay. Well, if the real interest rate is R and this is my demand curve, if I want to find the quantity of demand of loanable funds, I simply go from the real interest rate, which is the price, all the way over to my demand curve for loanable funds and down and boom, that's the quantity. Okay. So now the thought experiment I want to conduct is saying, what if one of the things that we're holding constant changes, but we're going to keep the real interest rate change? And what you have to ask yourself is, at the end of this change, will firms want to borrow more or will they want to borrow less? That'll tell us what happens to quantity demand of loanable funds, which will then tell us wh whether the demand curve for loanable funds will shift to the right or whether it will shift to the left. All right. So in this very first example, we'll call this example one. Let's just say that there's an increase in expected future profits. So if you remember from principles of micro, one of the things we assume about corporations, they're just greedy profit maximizers who care about nobody but themselves. They just want to maximize profits. Um, but profits just don't fall down like manna from heaven. If you want to have part of those profits, you're going to have to build the product and build the factories to produce the products to get those profits. So if suddenly firms become, or you could just call this, they become more optimistic about this, uh, the future of the economy. That's another way I could have written this. If firms become more optimistic about the future of the economy, in other words, they think um, profits of all investment projects are going to increase, that means there were going to be, that means that there are some investment projects before that weren't all that profitable, but now because firms have become more optimistic about the future, those investment projects will now be profitable. Well, given our assumption that firms have to go to banks to borrow to invest, that means firms are going to have to borrow additional funds to finance those new, um, or to finance those investment projects that are now profitable. How much more are they going to have to borrow? I don't know. But it does mean the quantity demand of loanable funds is going to increase, and it's got to increase by some amount. And let's just say it increases to Q2. All right. Now remember, by assumption, we said we're keeping the real interest rate fixed. That means the new combination we're at is at a real interest rate of R, which I'll extend the dashed line all the way over to here. That's meant to be horizontal. And the new quantity demand by loanable funds is Q2. And so they intersect here at point B. All right. So that's the new combi equilibrium quantity, or I should say equilibrium, the new combi of combination of real interest rates and the quantity demand of loanable funds. Now, obviously, point B is not on the existing um, demand curve for loanable funds, which means there must be some new demand curve for loanable funds, call it D2, that looks like this. And the demand curve for loanable funds has shifted to the right. All right? So think about that. Firms, uh, what happened? Firms, something happened that made firms more optimistic about the future. They high, expected higher profits in the future. That meant some investment projects that weren't profitable before now are. Firms go to borrow to finance those investment projects. So the demand curve for loanable funds shifts out to the right. And if the real interest rate were to stay at R, it may not in equilibrium, but let's just assume right now it does stay at R, then the quantity demand of loanable funds increases from Q1 to Q2. All right, let's do a shift. I did. Let's do another shift. Let's say there's an increase in the corporate tax rate. Okay, so now let's say for the sake of argument, 
that um, the government decides, decides to increase the corporate tax rate and let's ignore issues about whether corporations can avoid taxes through various means and let's just say they pay the, they pay the higher tax rate. Well, our assumption about firms is that they're greedy profit maximizers, which means they want to maximize profits. But what they really maximize is after-tax profits. They want to maximize the portion of the profits that they themselves get to keep. Okay. Well, if you think about that then, if you increase corporate um, tax rates, so now firms are paying more taxes on, an, on every investment project, that means there are some investment projects out there before that were profitable at the low tax rate that will no longer be profitable at the high tax rate. So the higher tax rate turns some profitable investments into unprofitable investments. Firms are not going to want to borrow to finance unprofitable investments, which means firms are going to pursue fewer investment projects. If they pursue fewer investment projects, then that means the quantity demanded for loanable funds is going to decrease. How much is it going to decrease? I don't know. I'm not really sure. But if we use um, the initial demand curve D1 as our point of reference, and so A is our reference point, we can say the quantity decreases to Q3. All right. Well, that means, and we held everything else the same, including the real interest rate. That means our new combination of real interest rates and quantity of loanable funds is point C. All right. Well, Point C is obviously not on the initial demand curve D1, so there must be some new demand curve, call it here D3, that looks like this, okay? Which means the demand curve for loanable funds must have shifted to the left, okay? All right, and that's how to think about shifts in the demand curve for loanable funds, okay? It's actually relatively quite simple. The thought experiment is firms are borrowing to invest. Period. End of story. And yeah, there's some other types of investment we have to worry about, new residential investment and inventories. But let's keep it simple and let's just talk about firms investing for new plant and equipment. Right? What do firms care about? Profits. Okay. Anything that affects the profitability of investments is going to influence how many investment projects firms want to pursue, and that's going to influence the quantity demand for loanable funds. Now the demand curve is drawn. Sh uh, showing the relationship between the real interest rate, the real cost of borrowing, and the quantity demand of loanable funds. So if it's just the real interest rate that changes, it's a movement along an existing demand curve, like we showed in the previous video. However, if one of those other things that we've assumed were held constant changes, then the entire demand curve is going to shift. All you have to do is figure out in which direction it's going to shift. If expected profits go up for whatever reason, then Firms are going to want to borrow to finance more investment projects. The demand curve shifts to the right. If future prof if profits decrease for whatever reason, say an increase in the corporate tax rate, then firms are going to want to borrow or pursue fewer investment projects, so the quantity demand of loanable funds will decrease, and the demand curve shifts to the left. And that about sums it up in a nutshell. Anything that leads firms to want to borrow more will shift the investment demand or will shift the demand for loanable funds to the right. Anything that leads firms to want to borrow less will shift the demand curve for loanable funds to the left. All right, that's it for the demand for loanable funds. The next uh, video will introduce the supply of loanable funds.